Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing Lord Voldemort's loyal followers, the Death Eaters, and discussing how powerful they truly are. In fact, we'll be ranking the top 5 most powerful. Now, we know that when Voldemort was just a boy at school, he was in Slytherin House, and it was here that he formed a gang of fellow Slytherin students. Dumbledore described Riddle's gang as a mixture of the weak seeking protection, the ambitious seeking glory, and the thuggish, seeking a leader who could show them more refined cruelty. It was these same students that are considered to be the forerunners to what would become the Death Eaters that we see later on in the books and films. Death Eaters are pure-blood radical supremacists that cast unforgivable curses without remorse and torture muggles, half-bloods, and blood traitors alike. There are quite a few Death Eaters that we know by name, but we'll just be looking at the five most powerful. Number five, Fenrir Greyback. Though Greyback is not an official, full-status Death Eater, he was still considered to be a low-level Death Eater. The main reasons for him never becoming a full-fledged Death Eater were that a. he was a werewolf, and b. he sort of had his own agenda. Greyback was a werewolf known for his animalistic brutality and tendency to target those who were helpless, particularly children. Remus Lupin's lycanthropy was the result of being bitten by Greyback as a child. Greyback is about as scary as they come, and has also shown cannibalistic tendencies. His life goal was to infect as many with lycanthropy as possible and bring power back to werewolves. Among other things, Greyback was an impressive duelist and took Ron and Neville's combined efforts to defeat him, a non-verbal magic expert. Greyback also possessed superhuman strength, which can't hurt. It's worth mentioning that Greyback never had the dark mark placed upon his arm, the signature mark of the Death Eaters. Number four, Antonin Dolohov. Antonin Dolohov was a dark, pure-blood wizard, and one of Lord Voldemort's most loyal followers. He was involved in both the First and Second Wizarding Wars, and was responsible for torturing countless muggles and non-supporters of the Dark Lord. Dolohov was personally responsible for defeating the powerful Aura Mad-Eye Moody, as well as Remus Lupin. When dueling the powerful Sirius Black, Dolohov held his own. Dolohov's, perhaps, most humiliating moment was when he was put face to face with Ron, Hermione, and Harry. Hermione was able to take control of the situation and put Dolohov in a full body bind curse. However, the famous trio have been able to accomplish some amazing things together, so I'm really not too surprised. Dolohov was highly skilled at transfiguration, the dark arts, dueling, non verbal magic, charms, and even spell creation, notably creating the famous Purple Jet that we know to come out at the end of his wand. Number three, Barty Crouch Jr. Barty Crouch Jr. was a British pure-blood wizard and the son of Ministry of Magic official, Bartimius Crouch Sr. Crouch Jr. has a rich history with the Death Eaters and joined them in his teenage years. Among other notable accomplishments, Crouch was the first wizard ever to escape from Azkaban in its 300-year history. Barty famously kidnaps and imprisons the powerful Mad-Eye Moody, then teaches a Hogwarts school for an entire year in his stead. What's so impressive about this is that he was completely undetected, even by the powerful Dumbledore. He taught defense against the dark arts and was actually a pretty good professor, teaching his class all about the unforgivable curses. In his earlier years, Barty Crouch Jr. was responsible for torturing Neville's parents and powerful auras, Frank and Alice Longbottom. He was instrumental in Voldemort's resurgence and was eventually reduced to nothing after being kissed by a Dementor, a fate arguably worse than death. Crouch was powerful in every area of magic and was known to be skilled at dueling, potions, charms, transfiguration, occlumency, non-verbal magic, and more. In my opinion, Crouch may be one of the most underrated wizards in all of history. Number two, Bellatrix Lestrange. You were probably wondering when Bellatrix would show up on this list. Bellatrix Lestrange was one of, if not Voldemort's most loyal follower. She was a frightening pure-blood witch that came from the Lestrange family, and a long line of powerful witches and wizards with a twisted agenda. Bellatrix was personally responsible for murdering Sirius Black and was an extremely talented witch. She was one of the most powerful people in the wizarding world, period, and basically only came after Dumbledore, Voldemort, and the number one spot on this list, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Bellatrix was a known proponent of the Cruciatus Curse, and had considerable knowledge in the realm of the Dark Arts. She was also an expert duelist, charms expert, powerful Occlumens, and tenacious warrior. She was one of the most twisted Death Eaters, and derived considerable pleasure from torturing people, finding the suffering of others to be amusing. 
She was eventually defeated by Molly Weasley, which I think was really just the result of her not taking Molly seriously. Her confidence was overinflated, and she didn't focus when the two were dueling, laughing hysterically throughout. Molly, in full motherly protective mode, bested Bellatrix, and she was never to be seen again. Number 1. Severus Snape Now, we know Severus Snape as Lily's suitor, the potions professor, the defense against the dark arts professor, and later headmaster of Hogwarts. Despite Snape ultimately showing that he was one of the good guys, he did have a history with the Death Eaters, and was crooked for a time. Snape, after all, was the one responsible for telling Voldemort about the prophecy that Professor Trelawney had predicted. Snape is widely considered to be one of the most gifted wizards in the entire Harry Potter series. His skills are really only outmatched by Voldemort and Dumbledore, who are in a bit of a class of their own. But Snape is extremely powerful nonetheless. During his time at Hogwarts, Snape assumed the identity of the Half-Blood Prince, and scribbled all sorts of spell creations into his copy of Advanced Potion Making. Among these spells was the powerful and vicious Sectumsempra. Snape can also fly, and is one of only two known wizards who are capable of doing this, the other being Voldemort. When Snape duels McGonagall, he is clearly holding back, but is still matching an extremely powerful witch. This is similar to the scene in the Ministry Atrium where Dumbledore is holding back against Voldemort, but to a more significant degree. Snape is also cited as saying that Voldemort is the most accomplished legilimens the world has ever seen, which would mean that him being able to keep Voldemort out of his mind would, in a way, make him one of the best Occlumens. There's truly no telling what Snape would have been able to accomplish if he had lived a longer life, and I think that he truly deserves the number one spot on this list. Honourable mentions include Corbin Yaxley, Peter Pettigrew, and Lucius Malfoy. I think that you could even make an argument for their placement on this list. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think of these rankings? What would you change? Let me know down in the comment section below. Until next time, you're a wizard, Harry! <laughs>